Welcome to today's program. Joining me in studio is Whitney George, Chief Executive Officer at Sprott Inc. We'll be discussing the energy transition, metal and mineral investing, and how Sprott has grown to be one of the biggest and most recognized players in the space. Whitney, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, could you start us off uh, by sharing a little bit about the history of Sprott and then your role at the firm? Sure. Um, Sprott was founded by Eric Sprott uh, at the beginning of the century. Um, he's an entrepreneur, uh, an investor in um, small precious metals mining companies, had a tr fabulous record. And then in the bear market that began in 2011, uh, things came a bit unglued. Um, and uh, Eric retreated because he preferred to invest his own money in the kinds of investments that might not be appropriate for institutions or retail. And so the firm found itself having to kind of remake itself. Um, I arrived in 2015, eight years ago. Um, I had a vision of uh, gathering up all the best talent in the world in the precious metals and mining space in the middle of a bear market. Um, it took a couple of years to convince the then management that that was a good strategy, but uh, beginning in the summer of um, 80, uh, 17, uh, five and a half years ago, uh, we separated ways with a mutual fund company that's now called Nine Point and began to build Sprott uh, you know, in the vision that I had. Over the last five years, Sprott has really experienced some explosive growth. Can you give us a sense of how much you've grown in those five years and what have been some of the key drivers for that growth? Well, it was sort of a low bar. I, I think when we started out and separated the business and became what we are today in, in 2017, we had less than five billion under management. Um, and currently we have roughly 25 billion under management. So in five and a half years, um, that's that's been a lot of fun um, and it's been with a lot of headwinds in the precious metals and mining space. It's not as if um, gold has you know, gone to all time new highs, we're roughly where we were back in 2011. Um, it was done through a combination of opportunistic acquisitions, um, um, some really excellent marketing of what I think are um, well-structured products um, and market appreciation. Recently, Sprott has evolved from what you started off as, as an investor in the precious uh, metals space, and you've expanded that to precious metals and uh, energy transition metals and minerals. Uh, can you talk us through what, what led to that tr transition or, or sure. expansion? So after the financial crisis, Eric Sprott invented our physical trusts, which are closed-end funds uh, as opposed to ETFs. With, which have the ability to store physical metal, uh, be redeemed, um, and uh, new shares can be created uh, when they trade at a premium. Uh, it's a unique kind of structure. Uh, we have uh, very large offerings now in gold and silver, gold and silver, and platinum, palladium. And we were looking for other areas where we might use that structure um, and stumbled upon uranium. Now, uh, that was two and a half years in the making. We got really lucky on our timing when we finally closed that transaction where we took over a C corporation and converted it to one of our physical trusts where it would go out and issue shares, um, buy physical uranium um, and store it. Um, that was very well received. Um, and the, uh, what we realized is that this, we, 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 we came to understand energy transition and we came to understand that uh, most investors were investing in upstream, they were electric vehicle manufacturers, uh, utilities, um, but you needed some basic mined material in order for any of the, that to happen, whether it be silver, uranium, cobalt, nickel, lithium. And we had all of this resident mining expertise. Very often the materials come out of the same hole um, in different kind of quantities and mixtures. And so we decided to really focus in on the upstream uh, requirements that we're going to need to come close to meeting any of our carbon reduction goals for things like batteries, uh, nuclear power, uh, transmission, silver for solar, uh, rare earth materials for magnets that go into turbines or electric vehicles. Um, these are all things that are you know, basic materials that have been underinvested in for two decades and where there's very little interest or expertise out there, but yet critical for all these other great things to happen. And you gathered all the, uh, all the expertise that's right. So. Sure, we have yeah. a very large mining uh, team of uh, mining analysts, portfolio managers, geologists, and some technical people. Um, and that all grew from our precious metals uh, franchise. 
Over the last year, uh, markets have really struggled between uh, rising inflation, rising interest rates, uh, recently the bank crisis, and yet Sprout has, has come out on top. Uh, what are some factors that have allowed the firm to do so well in this environment? Well, we're kind of a big fish in a very small pond. Um, allocations to commodities, um, precious metals, or transition materials are very, very low, historic lows amongst um, most a asset managers, portfolio managers. Um, uh, so there wasn't really much further to go down. Uh, gold has done, played its role um, as a neutral currency, uh, nobody's obligation, and last year, in the last year, has held up uh, very nicely. In fact, few people would really realize it's done better than the S&P so far this century. Um, as an investment and a diversifier. So that certainly stabilized and you know, there is growing interest um, you know, in the space now because of the volatility um, and that understanding. Um, so we've had positive flows uh, through this whole you know, difficult period. Whitney, as we go into the summer, uh, the saying is sell in May and go away, but I'm sure for, for investors who are interested in, in staying active, uh, what, are, what should they be looking out for? Where are you seeing some risks and where are you seeing opportunities? Well, I think um, we're probably done with the interest rate hike cycle as of today, uh, one would hope. There's a lag effect already. We're seeing accidents popping up all over the place in banking. I think people should be prepared to see that happen in leveraged commercial real estate. Uh, there are obviously going to be some large issues with pensions and how they're funded. Um, so it's going to be a difficult period. Um, and of course, the debt ceiling due date is moving very quickly towards us. Um, tax receipts have been disappointing. Um, we uh, ran a 8% uh, of GDP deficit in the first half of the year. So spending is going up. And of course, a recession would make that um, you know, even more expensive. So. Uh, we're, we, we have some things to deal with for sure. Sell and make and you know, go away might not be a terrible idea. At the end, though, we think hard assets will do very, very well. Fundamentally, we believe um, the Fed didn't cause inflation. Uh, there's some global forces at play. Uh, one is our decarbonization goals and how much that's going to cost to be able to accomplish that, and deglobalization in general, onshoring, friendshoring. Uh, those are going to be expensive propositions and are uh, going to be with us for a long time, irrespective of what the Fed does with interest rates. Well, you're well positioned for all of that. We hope so. Thank you. Well, Whitney, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. For our viewers and listeners who would like to learn more about Sprott, we encourage you to visit Sprott.com to download research reports and educational materials. For Asset TV, I'm Jonathan Forsgren. We'll see you next time.